Hey y'all, so today we're taking a look at vertex color painting using ProBuilder inside of Unity, and then taking that vertex color and animating the mesh through a procedural animation built into a shader using Shader Graph. So the first question is, why would you do this? And it's really because it's a lot more efficient than trying to animate something in timeline and having a bunch of different skinned meshes animating in a scene. The eventuality of what I want to create with this asset in a future video will be a particle system with a bunch of flying elements within that system that can fly around the scene, chase after my character, etc. And baking all of this into vertex color is going to be super efficient when I have dozens if not hundreds of these in the scene. So I'm going to post this documentation in the description below. Uh, there's a lot of good call outs here about how to set vertex color within ProBuilder inside of Unity. I'm doing all of this in Unity. However, if you're working inside of Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, etc., you can obviously set vertex colors in those pieces of software. Software that's kind of in between 3D CC and Unity, like Substance Painter or anything like that, typically doesn't do well with setting vertex color as much as it does ingesting and, and using that and things like material ID maps. But let's go ahead and dive in and see how to use this inside of Unity. So the first thing that you're going to do is go to Window, Package Manager, come into the Unity Registry, type in Pro Builder, and install this Pro Builder package right here. So I already have mine installed. Once that's installed, we have our Pro Builder menu right up here in the contextual menu. If you need a refresher on how all of this works, I'll have a video in the top right of this video that you're watching right now. That's kind of my introduction to Pro Builder and how to use some of these tools. So because I'm not diving deep into how to use Pro Builder in this video, I am going to just very quickly move through this. I also want to hide some of these gizmos because they're getting in my way just a little bit. So the key is here mainly just for me to orient myself around what I'm painting vertex color wise. The thing that I really want to be painting is a wing or wings. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a cube. And let's drag this up so that it intersects with our key. I'm pretty happy with that. And then let's say I come over into here, I do edit and I'm going to do some edge loops. I think that's probably enough for now. Um, we could certainly come in here and continue to edit, but just for the sake of, of this, I'm going to go ahead and call that good. I think that looks good enough. Um, we could certainly do a lot more to it. So I'll get out of edit mode. And then what I want to do is get into vertex color paint. And basically what I want to do is animate this wing flying up and down without me having to do any actual manual keyframes or animation. So I'm going to go into tool, pro builder, editors, open up the vertex color editor. And I'm going to take this and probably slot it in right here. Now, what I want to do is eventually split my selection through a channel selection of either R, G, or B. So what I want to do is basically paint the vertices of this object in colors that recede from one of those. So it, let's say I choose R for red. I'm going to have this be the brightest red at the tip. Maybe this one will be a little bit less red towards a blue. This one might be almost purple, this one's a solid purple, and all the way in the center is blue. And what that's gonna do is as I animate just the red vertices, it's going to animate the wing to fly up and down on everything but the center and kind of a gradient that extends out. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So the most intense red that I see is there. So let me select these vertices and hit apply. I'll grab this next one and let's say coming over to red, and moving towards blue, I'm gonna go this way, 
and apply. Come over this way and apply. Come over this way and let's say apply. And then come over this way and apply that here. So now what we have is a nice gradient of less and less red until we get all the way to the B of blue. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and exit the editor mode, duplicate this item, flip it, and then I'm going to move it right over here. And now both of these are going to animate based on what I'm about to set up next. So what that is going to be is a shader graph asset. So I'm going to create shader graph, HDRP, and then a lit shader. I am using HDRP in, inside of Unity 6 because my eventual use of this being in a particle system as a 3D mesh render is something that's built into HDRP. So I wanna leverage that piece in the VFX graph in a future video, um, but just for context, that's why we're in HDRP right now. I'm also going to name this Wings. I'm going to double click this asset and I can pull this right over here. So what do we want to do? We want to get the vertex color of what we've just made. So vertex color. And then I wanna take that and I wanna split out the RGB. So I'm going to split. And then I'm going to have this come out and I'm going to wanna to multiply it by something. All right, so now let me take these three things and move them over. So now that we have our red channel split out here, I want to then multiply it all by some sort of kind of sine wave that's going to be going up and down. So let's say I come over here and I add in a sine wave. Now that I have that sine wave, what I wanna do is essentially drive it via time. So I'm going to do a basic time node and plug that in here. Now you can see it's slowly moving up and down. Then what I want to do is plug this into that multiply node so that it's now driving based on vertex color. So then what I wanna do is say, okay, I have this sine wave set up. It's going to drive based on vertex color, the R channel, and I wanna drive it in a direction. So I wanna drive it up and down, which will be on the Y vector. So I'm going to come over here and do a vector three and call it the Y here. And then what I want to do is essentially add that to the vertex position of the vertices that have R assigned to them. So I'm going to say add and then come over here and do a node for vertex position. Inside of this, I want this to be an object position. So I'm going to bring that down to add. And now you can see that this is driving the Y up and down. And now what we want to do is plug that into our position. So now that I have that plugged into position, what I'm going to want to do is go ahead and save it out. Come back into my scene and I'm going to apply the wings shader to this. So Right now it has a pro builder material. What I can do is essentially create a material, call this wings, assign this here and here. So I'm gonna go into shader graphs, find wings. And now that I have assigned this wings variable, you're not gonna see anything in here. I could either preview it inside of the wings panel here in the preview with that asset selected, or I can just hit play and see what this looks like. So let's take a quick look. And so now we have our wings moving around. And you could see I could obviously make this a lot more smooth, add some more vertices and kind of blend between them. Let me go ahead and stop this and maybe let's do something to build a little bit more realism. And that would be adding some speed to what's happening here. So this time variable, I want to essentially multiply times um, some sort of external variable. So I'm just going to add in a float over here and call this speed 
of wings. Bring this down here. And then what I'm going to want to do is create a multiply node and drag my speed into B, my time into A, and the output into the sign. Now, if I come over here, I can change the default value to 10. And it's going to be moving a bit faster. So every time that you make a big change, you want to save out your wings graph. Let me come back over here into game, hit play. And now we'll see the wings moving quite a bit faster. So you can see how this begins to work. I hope that that is super helpful for y'all. Um, that's basically a simple look at vertex color and animating based on vertex color within Shader Graph. So a very quick recap. We took the vertex color, we split out the red channel, and then we multiplied it. On the other side of that multiply, we then take a time multiplied by an external float variable that is now exposed in the shader here. We then run that through a sign operation, and we then take that into a vector three where we're going to move the Y of what we're doing. We then take that Y and we add it to the position of the object based, the object space vertices. And then we feed that into the vertex position of the shader. All right, so now that I have all that set up, uh, you can come over here and you can play with base color and do whatever you want with it. I'm just gonna set mine to white. Uh, in theory, we could continue to build out this shader graph to accept whatever types of inputs we need for this shader. Uh, but after doing that, I'm gonna hit save. Then I wanna come over here and I'm just gonna assign another new material called gold to the key itself. Um, this might be an interesting tutorial in the future would be to come into this key and uh, create a shader that has rust and procedural stuff like that. But I'm just going to come over here and do a base map of kind of a golden color, drag the metallic way up, and smooth this down. So now that we've done that, we can hit play. And we can see that that is working as expected. Worth noting that the, the final tip vertices of this are not rising beyond the one next to it. I kind of like that look, so I'm gonna leave it the way it is. But obviously if we wanted to smooth this out even more, um, we would just need to make sure that there was less red in the vertices next to the brightest red that we have. The way that it is though, it kind of looks like it's trying really hard to fly, like it's an older key. So I feel like this is going to be working for me for the effect that I'm going for. Let's say we come over into this variable, take the speed to 100, and it gets a little bit more intense. 50 perhaps. So hopefully that's helpful and you start to understand how vertex painting works, how you can drive that through shader graph and that you learn something from this. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope y'all are having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.